Today I'm looking at my 2007 Pontiac Vibe and the problem I'm having with this today is that one of the heat shields that is on the exhaust system has fallen off and is now um, rattling around on top of the exhaust pipe. Let's see if I can show it here. I'm not sure if the lighting is all that great. But you should be able to see it here. Kind of hanging around. So I'm going to jack this thing up and then crawl under there and see if there's a good way to reattach this to the car. Okay, so here's the heat shield. You can see that it's loose. And there's just a single bolt on the back of the car here that's holding it on to this bracket that's up here. But there is a sort of a clip mounted to the bracket, and it looks like in some way, shape, or form, that bolt goes through the heat shield and into that bracket. And it looks like the bolt is broken, or the bracket's broken, I'm not sure. Alright, I'm not sure how well this is showing things. I don't have a lot of room for the camera here. But you can kind of see the hole in the heat shield in the where the that... Uh, bolt used to be and then there's the um, the hole in the bracket and you can kind of see the hole in the bracket is star shaped okay so I think you can see here that this is the the bolt that was in the heat shield and it's just got that star pattern uh, on the end of it here instead of a nut or instead of a traditional nut and it looks like that was just pressed into that bracket and everything just kind of fell out Okay, so I've run into some technical difficulty here. Uh, trying to get the heat shield off, I took the front three bolts out. Those came out more or less easily. And then, in order to get it off of the exhaust pipe here, I realized I had to uh, loosen these bolts here. This one on this side hasn't really given me any trouble. That seems like it came out okay. This one was real tight, but it was moving. And then what happened was, I don't know if I can show it because the cross member here is in the way, but uh, on the top side of the flange there's a square nut that's welded, just welded onto the flange. And about halfway through loosening this thing up, the stupid square nut came unwelded. It broke. And so this is now spinning freely. I tried putting some vice grips on here, but I'm just not able to hold it uh, tight enough to spin this thing out. It's just clogged with rust. So I'm going to try and use my cutting wheel and cut the bolt right here and then I'll just put new ones on here. Okay, you can see here I've got the heat shield off after grinding that bolt and also removing the two nuts on either side of the exhaust pipe where that black bracket was and then swinging that out of the way. You can see I removed one nut all the way. This one over here and that one I just left on. Swung the bracket out of the way and I was able to kind of pull this down far enough to get the heat shield out. I ended up coming this way with it. Um, even though the heat shield is wider in that direction, it's shallower and was able to kind of come out of there with a little bit of force. So here's the bracket in question. That is the problem. You can see there, it's just got this star-shaped pattern where the nut is pressed into it and of course now it's cracked and the nut has fallen out. I think this just clips on there, I'm not sure. I might even be able to pull that off with a screwdriver. Uh, but either way this is the gas tank strap. So I'm going to run down now to Advanced Auto and see if they have um, any kind of replacement. I doubt they will but it's Saturday night, Saturday evening and nothing else is open at the, at the moment. Uh, I'd like to be able to fix this thing for Monday, but if I can't, then I suppose I'll just have to call the dealer and see what they've got. Okay, after thinking about this overnight for a little while, I, uh, I've decided what I'm going to do uh, first is uh, do a temporary solution where I put the heat shield back in place and use some wire to kind of hold it together while I can get the... Um, the correct replacement parts from the dealership, which is, I think, where I'll need to go uh, to get them. Uh, and then that way I'll be able to uh, drive the car during the week and, and stuff like that. And then maybe next weekend I can fix it with 
uh, the, the correct parts. But I think this will hold for now. It'll probably hold for a while, but um, so I'll get to it. The other thing that I did was I, I ended up getting some new um, exhaust bolts here from uh, Advanced Auto. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is drill a couple of holes here in the heat shield around the original hole so that I can run the wire through it. And I'll put a few holes here just because I don't know, you know, what the best angle is going to be or any of that. Okay, there you can see I put a bunch of holes in there just to, like I said, once I get this thing in, whichever one works the best I'll use uh, one or two or whatever of them, and uh, that'll be that. Here's the piece of steel wire that I've cut that I'm going to use to hold up the heat shield. I've got it wrapped around the plastic clip here, and uh, I'm going to just tuck this up out of the way to get the heat shield in next. I guess what I could do also, uh, using this method, would be to loosen the gas tank strap so that I could get the wire right around the gas tank strap, and that would be maybe a, a more permanent fix with the wire. Okay, I've got the heat shield back on. Um, it's bolted on in the front. I put all the bolts back on, and I even put the bolts or the nuts for the uh, the cross member there uh, back in. And I put a little never seize on those bolts and nuts just to help um, so that when I take them off again, they're not quite as rusty as they were this time. So anyway, back over here. You can see I added a second wire just in case around the clip. So I've got two wires now coming through some of these holes I drilled. And now what I'll do is just kind of push this up into place where it feels like it's going to be good. Pull the wires down and then use some pliers and just twist them together like a twist tie and get it as tight as I can for now. And that will hold it up out of the way, um, more or less. Okay, so here you can see I've got the wires twisted together and tightened up, and uh, the heat shield is up here and tight. Um, it should should be okay. I don't know if it's going to rattle a little bit or not, uh, but at least it won't be hanging down on the exhaust, uh, and that should uh, should hold for at least a couple of weeks. Probably would hold for a while, but but I think uh, I'll still try and get a uh, a normal hanger for this at some point and fix it now. Well. Everything is still easy to get to and not too rusted. Um, anyway, so the next thing to do is to put the exhaust back together. And, of course, I'll have to use the, the at least one of the new bolts that I bought, if not both. I'm not sure um, about this side here. This still has the nut welded on the flange. So I may try and just use the old bolt, bolt on this side and use the new one on this side since the, the welded nut is gone. Okay, so I've got the new bolt and nut on the side where the nut had come off the flange. I got it started just to get things compressed here. And then I did a check and I realized that the new bolts, whoops, the way they're designed is that the, the threaded shank here, and I've got some never sees on there, you can see, um, is a thinner shank, or thinner diameter than uh, the original stock bolt, and I don't know if that's just coincidence because this is a one-size-fits-all type of part, or if it was designed that way, which you can see, if I can get my hand out of the way, that it actually fits up through the original bolt and there's enough threads there to get the nut over it, um, so I don't have to uh, use the old bolt on that side, which is what I thought I was going to have to do. Okay, this is the spring from my uh, exhaust bolt. And I wanted to kind of compress it um, so that I can get the, the bolt up through the nut there. So I've compressed it in the vise and put some zip ties on it to hold it. Hopefully this will kind of keep it compressed enough for me to get the bolt in there. Okay, hopefully here you can see what I was going after. Um, I've got the spring compressed enough just for the bolt to go through the flange and enough of the threads to stick out above that original nut so that I could get the new nut on and caught. So I'll tighten that up as much as I can here, just by hand I guess. That'll be good enough. Maybe I'll give it a crank with the, 
the socket here just to make sure it's in there. Okay, so now I should be able to cut the zip ties and then just finish tightening this. Fiddly here with the trying to hold the camera too, but and then there's one more here. Okay, that should release the tension on the spring, and then I should be able to just pull these out of here. Like take two hands, but I'll pull these out of here, and I should be good to go. Okay, so there's the the bolt all tightened up and in place. Everything feels good and snug, and this is pretty good. So now I guess the last step is to just pull the pull the car down off the jack stand, clean up the tools, and take it for a test. Take it. Okay, so that's it for now. Uh, I'll get the car on the ground here. Um, I think everything's wrapped up. I'll take it for a quick test ride and make sure everything's uh, solid and doesn't rattle too much, but I think it'll be okay. So uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way and stay tuned. Um, I'll try and document what I do when I put the, uh, the factory parts on when I get a hold of them.